Hi guys, my name is Roger, and I'm building a mid-engine supercar in the basement of my home. Let's take a look at what I've been working on this week. Okay, in last week's video I showed you that we had a roof made and was sitting up on top of the car just to kind of get a visual of what it would look like. I have taken the time to trim some of the edges to the right size. You can see it had primer on the edges. I've removed the primer. I've trimmed out here around the roll cage on all four corners approximately where they need to go. I may need to lower this a little or raise it. And the same here, it could need to lower or raise just a little bit, but this is close. And in last week's video, there was a gap here when it was touching in the center. The gap progressively got wider out to the edge, and I said that I thought it was because the back of the roof was raised up high, uh, too high, and when I notched it to fit around the roll bar and lowered it, I thought it would close this gap. And it did, in fact, this gap looks correct all the way around now. The only thing that I don't think is perfect is the windshield has a little bit of a bump here that wasn't in the roof file. And I may have to fill in just a little bit here with some body filler, Bondo, just to make that blend in perfect. But it, it won't take much. Um, it's very close. Um, and like I said, the gap here looking straight down is perfect. So... I, uh, I also wet sanded one spot here just to kind of see how slick I could get this roof and it is incredibly slick. Actually, if I wet sanded the entire thing, I could probably clear coat it and it would make a nice finished product. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but that one spot here where I wet sanded really looks good. So anyway, I want to show you what that looks like. That is as far as I'm going to take this for now. I even started chipping away here on this delaminated uh, gel coat some. I think I'm going to go ahead and chip all of that off and over here on this spot and come back in and brush some epoxy in and, and build it up till it's higher than the gel coat. And I can sand that down and work it in till it's smooth. But I believe the epoxy will build up there and fill in and look fine once the car, everything is painted. But uh, that's what we have here. Let's, uh, let's go over and take a look at a mold. So I cut half of this uh, rear hatch mold and I have painted it with one coat of wood glue. So the, the glue soaks into the wood and sets up and makes a nice finish to start working from. I've started sanding in a few spots just to, uh, once you brush the glue on and it dries, it's rough. It has a, a real rough texture to it. So I've come back and sanded and started smoothing this out um, here where the seams are with the wood overlaps where it's going from one layer of wood to the other of course once that builds up a primer it'll start filling in it's a little rough on all of these spots but coat or two of primer will take care of that the only other thing as you can see some places here i had to put bondo i had a a, a tool mess up or break and when i changed to a new tool i didn't have the z-axis set exactly perfect so i had some Places here I had to fill in with Bondo before I ran my finishing pass with the ball end mill. So that's what you're seeing here. And there's also one place here where I had an issue with a CNC and the X axis wasn't moving. Uh, the machine thought it was, but it wasn't physically so. It was digging in, it was slowly cutting in and made a little trench here. I'll have to fill that in with Bondo also. And that brings me to the issue I had with the CNC machine. So let's go up there and take a look at the machine and let me explain what's going on with it. Okay, you can see here I've started cutting the other half of the rear hatch. And uh, this mold is it's coming along. It's probably 75 or 80% finished. But I had two issues with the CNC machine. And the first one I caused, and the second one I'm not sure exactly what's going on yet. But the first one is when I made the machine, when I was assembling it, there are four ball bearings, linear bearings here on this uh, X assembly to slide it side to side. And when I put one of the bearings here on this rail, it didn't go on correctly and I knocked several of the ball bearings out of it. Now I put the balls back in it, I thought I had it assembled correctly, but over time, some of the balls have fallen out and that bearing locked up. So that 
piece that you saw cut in the other mold, it was in the opposite side, but it was just uh, a trench basically cut in it here. What happened was that bearing had seized up. It wasn't moving or it was almost impossible to move. I could move it to get it off, but it was overpowering the motor here and it wouldn't move it. So when the machine thought it was still moving side to side, it wasn't and it was actually just cutting a trench in the part. So I had to order some new linear bearings and disassemble the machine and put them on, recalibrate everything. And I did that. And I did that before I started cutting this mold. And I started cutting this mold and I got to the point to where I am now. I've had a few issues with the machine. And what happens is the Z axis quits working. And basically this the head here just drops and the end mill plunges into the part. It did it here and I wasn't quite sure what happened. So I restarted the machine and it did it here. So I knew I had an issue. I came out and started doing some checks. I don't know for sure what's going on, but it's a, a lack of communication between the motor driver and the stepper motor here, the motor driver or the encoder on the motor or the wiring in between. It's losing connection and losing reference to where it's at. It just when it loses that, it basically the motor quits functioning and allows the end mill to plunge into the part. So I have new uh, motor drivers ordered. They're coming from China. They've already shipped. So it's gonna be a few days before they get here. So until then, I'm kind of at a standstill. The uh, CNC is not working correctly, so I can't use it. And unfortunately, this mold is not complete. Um, when those parts come in, I still don't know if I've ordered the right parts. I just ordered a motor driver. I did not order a new stepper motor with the encoder on it. So I still may not have the right parts ordered and may not be able to get this running once those parts do arrive, but we'll just have to see. If that doesn't fix it, I'll have to order something else. Continue my search for what exactly is wrong, but it can only be one of three things. <clears throat> and once I get the CNC back running, I can wrap up this mold here in about two days and take it downstairs and join the two halves together and start priming and sanding and getting this mold ready to use. So until then, I am kind of dead in the water and I know this video is kind of short. There's not a huge update. I uh, wasn't expecting them, the CNC machine to be down for so long, but it is what it is. But that brings you up to speed and I will be back as soon as the machine is running and I have some progress to show you guys.